This is Rack Noble, you're tuned in to Women's Fight News and Association of Box Story. And here, we're here with Clarissa Shields, The Quote. Clarissa, how are you feeling today? I feel good, yourself? Yeah, I'm good myself. Of course, congratulations for the win on Saturday night on the Boxer Cards. Thank you. Um, does it get frustrating in some of these big fights anticipated where you seem to find them pretty easy? No, we don't get boring because I try to outperform my last performance, which was Marie Eve DeCare, which I felt like I did terrible. Even though I won 10 rounds, it was like I had a year off and I missed a lot of shots. I wasn't able to throw my combination the way that I wanted to. Just a lot that I had to deal with. Now, to come back to this fight, to have the combination, the head movement, to be able to throw the hard body shots. I mean, to do whatever I wanted to do and not ever have no worries in the fight. Um, that's how I like to win fights. And, of course, if you can get a knockout. But what's better than a knockout or, you know, what's close to a knockout is if you can, you know, beat the hell out of somebody for all the rounds. Yeah, you definitely had that held down from round one to round ten. Didn't seem to be out of any control. I see um, last week or the week before in the States, she was with Floyd, training with Floyd for a bit. And it seemed pretty much like a Floyd performance where he shuts them out completely and they've got no chance or no anything in that fight. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the kind of flavor that I wanted to bring here. I had the spicy walkout with the with the outfit on. I came out to Ludacris Move, bitch. And that's to let Emma Cozy know, get out of my way. I'm not even really here for you. I'm here for Savannah Marshall. You know, you blocking my way. And um, that's why I came out to that song. I was, I mean, it was a shutout performance. But I knew that it would be that in camp. And of course, I'm sure you've been asked a thousand times, but Savannah Marshall, you had the face-to-face -face confrontation after the fight. Do you feel the fight with Savannah Marshall will be your biggest fight to date due to the anticipation, the build-up, and for it being all the belts once again? Um, I don't think it'd be the biggest women's fight, but I think that it is a, a, a huge grudge match that people want to see and that um, it has a great story to it. We got real beef, right? She's a hater. She want to be like me. She want my chain. She wish she can wear blue hair. She wish she had a booty like mine. Like Savannah Marshall just want to be me so bad and she can't out of all these years she just had to always be like third and fourth and fifth place to me and she hates it because now we're in a pro she just trying to come at me and trying to throw me off but it's like you know what is a what is a peasant to a queen you know nothing for you personally would this be the biggest win of your career during it during to the point that it's come at right now Ooh. nope and i and i say that because christina hammer and I believe um, Hannah Gabriels was one of my biggest wins. And those girls are light years to me ahead of um, Savannah Marshall and just their achievements. You know, Hammer was nine years undefeated champion. Um, Hannah Gabriels was a two-weight world champion, you know, when we when we fought. So to be going in here with just a person who only has one title and who fought for a title that I had to vacate, it's like, yeah, right. You know, but I think that um, with the I think it's a huge story, and it may be one of the biggest women's fights talked about. You know, right now, right now, alongside Kay Taylor versus Amanda Serrano. But I'm a I'm a washer. No, definitely alongside Katie Taylor, Amanda Serrano. This is probably the second biggest fight for females right about now. But I want to touch on something that you said. You mentioned stories. Boxing's all about stories, backstories, the past. Um, there are a few fighters that are floating around on the US scene who you've had rivalries from as an amateur, the likes of TK Hemingway, Raquel Miller. Would you find fights with them down the line something that could be built up and be made a big issue such as the one with Savannah Marshall? I mean, no, because I beat them. I had a chance to fight against them multiple times. I beat Raquel Miller three times. I beat TK Hemingway five times. And I understand you get lucky once, you know, maybe even twice, but she don't get lucky and beat somebody three times and beat somebody five times in a row. And, you know, just to Raquel Miller, um, she hasn't really fought in the last couple of years. I think she just had a comeback fight after being laid off for two years. Yeah. And then Tika Hemingway, who's always barking at my tree, um, she hasn't accomplished shit. She couldn't do nothing in the amateurs. She can't do nothing in the pros. All she do is got a big-ass mouth and be barking, 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 barking. But I ain't going to do nothing. And the thing is, when I, if I have to work this hard to be at the top and to be number one, I don't know why these girls feel like just because we fought in the amateurs that they deserve to fight against me. Work your way to the top, beat a few girls who I've beaten, and then I'll see you at the top. Till then, stay in your place, stay at the bottom, and get to where I am. 
I think Raquel Miller actually was a WBA interim champion. I don't know if she is now. Yeah, she was at 154. Yeah, but at 154. And I was undisputed at 154. So, we could have fought. And my and my team has made her offers. But as far as Antika Hemingway, she's not even in talks. I mean, they need to have, like, a little mini tournament where Tika Hemingway and Raquel Miller maybe fight against each other. And then the winner can go up and fight against... Marie Eve to care, and if they beat Marie Eve to care, then maybe they can get inside the ring with me or some 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 kind of process. But um, I think that Raquel Miller, I think that she's maybe close. She's way way closer to getting a fight with me than Tika Hemingway will ever be because Tika Hemingway is lazy. She's fucking fat. She don't train. Um, she fights easy opponents. She can't even diet correctly. Like I don't know what's wrong with Tika. Another potential fight which could be something lined up for you, of course, you and Savannah will unify the with the weight division. Ellen Cedaros and Frank Chong Cruz, who was your first opponent, that could be another potential matchup for you, whoever the winner of that is. Would that be something that interests you? Because we're gonna get undisputed versus undisputed, if that's the case. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? I want Franchine to become undisputed champion. I think that she's worked hard for it. Um I think she can beat Ellen Cedaros. She has to go out there and do it. Um, but I believe that I would want to go down to 147 first before I go back up to 168. So if if the opportunity presents itself, it would be like the end Wolf versus um, Layla Ali that, that that never happened. So I, would, I, I wouldn't I um, would turn away from that fight, but I would definitely want to go to 147 first, I believe. So you got eyes on McCaskill and Rick Ramos after you uh, get past Savannah Marshall? Rick Ramos is not a fighter, even though he talks like he's one. McCaskill is a fighter, so my eyes is on McCaskill, you know, and uh, any of the other 147 contenders. I think that Rick needs to let McCaskill do the talking and him just kind of zip it up because he's not really about that action because Mark reached out to him about a fight and they don't want smoke with the globe. So just touching the just touching the PFL, of course, you're coming into MMA. You've had two fights in there so far. I see you previously you were training with Holly Holm, who is the only female or only person ever to win a MMA title and a boxing title. How long do you think it will take you before you can reach the heights of, say, a Holly Holm or an MMA contender? Um, I'm going to go to be a PFL MMA world champion next year. So that's when I'll be going for it. Um, Katie, I mean, look, Holly is such a great fighter, and she's giving me, you know, some great tips and giving me a blueprint to how I can be. Uh, a MMA world champion it's all about the work that I put in so that's why after I beat Savannah Marshall I'll be taking off from boxing for a while and specifically focusing on 2023 and trying to win that million dollars most definitely I hear that well Carissa thank you for your time thank you for tuning in I'm Rack Noble from Book Story Women's Fight News and Association and we're out thank you for watching and if you enjoyed the video please hit like don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any future content and why not check out any other videos on the channel. You can follow Women's Fight News on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook.